Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rahul Rowlett, and I promised you guys a double upload, so here is your double upload. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be taking a look at, of course, another countdown video for Pokemon Legends ZA, and as such, we're going to be taking a look at some Pokemon theories, rumors, and everything in between. First things first is this awesome, and I really mean awesome concept, for a Mega Charizard Z. Now, this is one of the most rumored and the most, like, likely things to happen is that Charizard might get a Z form. We already have a Mega Charizard X and Y that respectively exist in Pokemon X and Y. However, this right here is a theorized Pokemon Charizard Z, right? A Z version. And there is a lot of, you know, talks about what if we're going to be getting a bunch of Mega Pokemon that are going to be labeled under the umbrella of Z Megas, right? Megas that are specifically, you know, for this game that have a relationship to maybe Zygarde or something along those lines. So at least that's where we're at with this uh, rumor. I personally think it's pretty cool. This was drawn by Card NL. So shout out to Card NL for this amazing work. But this is only one of the first things, the combination of Zygarde and of course Mega Charizard X and Y's attributes. As you guys can see, this is a fantastic drawing. Honestly, I'm not drawing, it's a 3D artwork actually, as you may notice. It's actually made um, literally fully in 3D. It looks fantastic. Again, shout out to Card NL. Please give him a follow on Twitter if you haven't already. Definitely deserves it. Now, let's move on to some actual theorizing. So, we're going to be talking about what the possible, and this is theories about what the possible uh, Pokemon starters will be in Pokemon, you know, the Legends ZA. So, you know, what will the actual starters be? So we're going to be looking through a bunch of posts here. Uh, actually, a four-part post by Soul Silver. Now, Soul Silver is a leak analyst, as I like to call him. He analyzes leaks and riddles and stuff like that and comes up with theories. So he does also theorize a lot. And he came out with this massive post saying the following. Part one. There is a 50% a 50-50 chance that Pokemon Legends ZA starters are the Kalos starters with Megas. So that is a high chance that we're not gonna actually get starters that are different, like we had in Legends RCS, where we had Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott. Instead, we might just get the regular Callow starters that we exist, you know, that we have in existence. And I actually think that's more likely and that we're gonna get megas for those than actually getting a new set of starters. Now, what are we talking about? Well, there's a 50-50 chance in the starters of the Callous region with megas or three mixed starters like in PLA. Now, in PLA, the starters final evolutions get regional forms based on Japanese lore. If PLZA follows that theming logic, but with megas, then Empoleon would be almost have to be the water type due to Napoleon and Bonaparte being such a huge part of French history and many other French kings and emperors, uh, you know, named Napoleon too. But of course, Napoleon Bonaparte, the first one, is probably the most like uh, well-known one. Now, this only works if we get megas though. Napoleon is already based on a uh, on Napoleon. Therefore, with a Mega, it can become even more Napoleon-like. But if we get a regional form instead, it will be based on something else. It's already based on Napoleon, so it wouldn't need a regional form to become more French-inspired. This is true of all the starter speculation to come, though. So, maybe Primarina has a shot because most every culture has a tale of mermaids. Still, nothing too important in France, and Feraligator could be a wild card because they love Johto, and it's been a long time since Feraligator got any love, which I agree with. That is a highly possible one. Also, he forgot to mention that since no Sinnoh Pokemon got any forms or love, nor could they be a part of the starters in PLA, it makes me feel like one of the Sinnoh starters has to be chosen for the PLA games. And Empoleon makes the most sense out of them as a Mega. But that's pretty much that. Osmio, Os, uh, Os, uh, Os, wait, Osmio actually does have a theory of their own, which uh, we can take a look at here quick before we go to part two. Saying, I thought of something for the starters of Legends EA. X and Y is the only games in the franchise to have two sets of starters. What if the, that continues in PLZA? What I mean is, the first set of starters being random ones, Snivy, Score Buddy, Piplop, for example, and the second being the Gen 6 starters. Now, what he's talking about here is, and I'm actually playing through X and Y right now, and when you reach Lumio City and you talk to Professor Sycamore, more, he actually, after a battle, offers you the Kanto starters. So you can get a Kanto starter and also a Kalo starter. So two starters from pretty much the beginning of the game, and you have them throughout, which is pretty crazy. So is it possible, because they already did that once, that they could do it the same thing again? The first set would have to be regional forms as Final Evolutions, since they are starters from other regions brought into a new one, and Kalos ones would be get the well-deserved Mega Evolutions. What's your thoughts? There's a lot of possibilities, but I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. However, moving on to the next post. This is the part two from Soul Silver Art. Now, this one starts off as following, which is part two, the most difficult one next. 
fire type. So he's already talked a little bit about like water type, which could be Empoleon, which is the most likely one, right? Uh, for alligator or Primarina, right? Those are the, uh, the three possible ones. Here he continues and says, now this speculation is all with the scope of getting megas. However, for these two, regional forms works well too. Now Scorbunny and Lytton are my top contenders. Why Lytton? Well, Paris is known for cats. Le Cat Noir, right? Maybe Mega or Collosion Incineroar would be quadruped and more feline. He has, wait, has no one seen the uh, Aristocrats? Aristocats, I guess, or whatever. Or the poster of the famed, le, uh, wait, uh, le, le Cat Noir, uh, or just all the cats around Paris, lol. That's a huge connection, in my opinion. Read the wiki. You guys can see right down here. Uh, le Chat Noir, which is, uh, I guess, the Black Cat, was a 19th century entertainment establishment in the Bohemian Montmartre district of Paris. It was opened on the 18th of November, 1981, at the 84th Boulevard there. I'm not going to try to read that. Uh, but yeah, so again, you try to make those co connections. Aristo, wait, the Aristocats as well. A uh, symbol of uh, artistic freedom. Uh, what does a black cat mean in Paris? Uh, cats are also part of uh, Paris's art scene. So yes, that is a good connection. Um, moving on though, he says, however, competitive players shudder at the thought of Mega Incineroar. So like many people are saying, I feel like Score Bunny might fit better just with the aesthetic of the trio I'm picking. But also because of this fact, Cinderace is also based on football, and around the same time that PLZA might be taking place was when organized football was brought over from England to France, or Cal you know, from Galar to Kalos, or England to France in the real world. This sounds too perfect, where especially uh, a regional form, though I don't know, um, I don't know what they could actually change in its design. Can't just change its colors and le bleu slow. Uh, to be honest, it could either be, either be either of them. They just give me a Mega Incineroar and a different ability, which is possible. So, again, a lot of possibilities. Also, he says thank you to Hoops and Hip Hop uh, who's, uh, for the uh, scoring fact, but make sure to check out Litten's Potential 2, uh, the grass type coming uh, later today, but I mean the snake. So, it also says that naturally Blaziken uh, is the other very French choice due to the rooster being the French national animal. Uh, but since it already has a Mega, seems less likely. Still, it could be Mega Blaziken Y or Mega Blaziken Z to make up because we already have regular Mega Blaziken, right? He says... Also, if I'm wrong, they uh, and they do use Pokemon that already have Megas, like, uh, you know, I guess in this case, you know, then he would think they would go for Snivy, Torchic, and Piplop, as they were shown in the Scarlet and Violet trailers. This is actually something that was in the Scarlet and Violet DLC trailer, where you actually had uh, one Grass Starter, uh, one Fire Starter, and one Water Starter that were paired up with the actual starters that were in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, for example, on top there, you have Oshawott in the trailer, and this is, of course, the trailer for the Indigo disc, you have Oshawott paired up with Piplup, which was very interesting. Then you had, and of course, Oshawott was one of the starters in uh, Leon Legends Arceus. Then you had, you know, our boy uh, Rowlet paired up with a Snivy. And then finally, Cyndaquil paired up with a Torchic. So it could be that these three will actually get themselves regional forms. Again, no guarantees. It's all just speculation, but it is very intriguing, and they do like to leave hints like that. You know, it is, it is, you know, kind of, um, Something they enjoy doing, so to say. It's not like out of the realm of, of doable. And he says the following, which is, uh, of course, that, you know, they were shown in the Skull and Valor DLC sh a starter reel trailer alongside three previous PLA starters. On top of this, these three make the most sense for a French region. One, Snivy, inspired by French royalty. Torchic, Rooster is the French national animal. And Piplup, based off of Napoleon Bonaparte, French king and conqueror. This all makes so much sense, which is why Game Freak won't do it, you know? But we'll see. Either way, moving on to part three. Now, this is the, uh, the grass starters, right? Here he said, finally, part three, the grass starters. Now, the top two contenders for me are Snivy and Sprigatito. Snivy has the clear edge, though. It's based on the French royalty. It's even depicted in X and Y at the Perfume Palace for having the potential mega. This is a positive. So you guys can see it right here. You have, of course, its design, uh, you know, all or like the ornaments at the Perfume Palace. I actually check this place out today in X and Y as I'm playing the game. So uh, in my playthrough, I've already seen this place and it was pretty cool. But um, again, you know, just kind of cool to just, you know, that this even is a fact. Um, but moving on, though, he says that the following, though, which is, however, it, it, it's not as positive in regards to it getting a regional form, since if there was a Colossian superior, superior, it would probably be on these gates instead of the Unovan version. It also has the French fleur de lis symbols on it. Then there is a Spricatito, which also has the French fleur de lis symbols on it, and it could be somewhat based off of the famous fictional cat puss in boots, created by a French author. And again, Paris is known for its cats. 
Lastly, its magician slash jester origins could easily be from France as well. Similar European origins do exist. However, it being a Gen 9 starter that was just had a uh, wait uh, had is a big negative, and if it was one of the PL, uh, PLZA starters, it would have to be chosen over Litten or vice versa because they wouldn't do two kitten starters. Lastly, I think Chikorita is still in the running as due uh, wait as it's due for some attention. I can see it getting a fairy type and leaning into the nature and beauty themes, which is definitely a possibility. So again, interestingly with this one, but let's move on to the final part, which is. Part 4, Pokemon X and Y are some of the only games where we get to pick from two sets of starters slash, you know, Gen 1 and Gen, you know, Gen 2, or sorry, Gen 1 and Gen 6. Um, so if there's both regional Forbes and Megas in PLZA, what if we can choose from two sets of starters again? First, we pick one from the mixed region starters, and then their final evolutions would have Collosion Forms, and then we pick one from the Kalos starters, but their final evolutions would get all Megas, which that would be, oh, that would be so good, man. That would actually be so good. Um, would be a very fun way to implement both features and keep th this tradition going, which, yes, I'd love that. That actually would be fantastic. I would genuinely love that. I think that would be so much fun. That would be so much more fun. Um, but yeah, I'm personally on board for it. And uh, yeah, you can see here, please tell me, uh, you know, what, what was Napoleon attacked by rabbits? All 3,000 rabbits were descendant on Napoleon, who ran away and locked himself inside his carriage. So apparently rabbits attacked him, which, uh, would make sense for Score Bunny, I guess. But yeah, uh, again, this is just one of the theories. Uh, we already talked about the whole like Blaziken connection, which could work. Um, but let's move on to, um, you know, I guess uh, a different post that isn't from Soul. But again, what do you guys think about these, you know, theories specifically from Soul here? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know. Uh, then here we have also Eduardo who gave his own thoughts on this, saying uh, regarding the starters of, uh, you know, starters for Pokemon Legends EA, I think that the obvious choices are superior. Uh, Louis the, I guess, 14th. Uh, or 15th, uh, I think 14th, um, Lady Oscar, Blaziken, Gallic Rooster, and of course, Emp uh, Empoleon, which is Napoleon's Bonaparte, and all three would get Megas if Collosion forms were to be out of the picture for some reason, which, yes, that would actually make a lot of sense. Um, so, again, I'm going to go through the rest of this guy's post. He makes some insane and massive posts about this kind of stuff, massive breakdowns. Uh, we will go through these at some point because he makes a lot of them, but for now, let's move on to the next thing, which is an actually interesting post that nobody actually paid attention to, but this was a post that's made by uh, Numeno Suke, who posted this on Twitter and said the following. I'm guessing that the one in the first volume of the Pokemon Encyclopedia is the third family of ZA. The second volume of the Pokemon Encyclopedia is the three families in uh, Regio. So, I, wait, so I live my life thinking that this might be possible, volume one and volume two. So, what he's talking about here is the fact that when they do this encyclopedia, they included Rowlet, Oshawott, and Cyndaquil matched up against each other to show their, you know, type matchup. And then the other matchup was with these three guys. It was Squirtle, Torchic, and Grookey. So is it possible that these three guys will actually be the starters? I don't know. It would be pretty cool if this is already a hint and this is inside of the encyclopedia. So I think it would be pretty cool if this actually was the real legitimate hint for what the starters will be. Kind of a weird way to like, you know, figure it out. It's inside of an encyclopedia. But nonetheless, it is a pretty cool little thing. It's just, again, a theory. Not Nothing here, do you know, to jump onto and instantly be like, this is reality. This is real. This is happening. But again, just something fun to bring up. So... Please keep that in mind. Next up, though, we do have some other theories from other people, which I think is worthwhile to bring up. Uh, this one, in this case, that we're looking at, this one is from Kuro Blitz. Now, again, shout out to our boy Kuro. He is a legend. He always comes through with some crazy stuff. Uh, but basically, what he's you got here is his own theory on what these things could be. So I thought we'd take a look at it, see what it's all about, and just kind of discuss the thing, you know, nonetheless, because I thought it could be, you know, just a little bit, a little bit fun to take a look at and just talk about. So just sit back, relax, and uh, let's get into it, right? Now, the first thing he says here is, is Legends Arceus starter Pokemon. So Gen 2, Cyndaquil, Cynthia in Hardcore Soul Silver's Johto, Gen 5, Oshawott, Cynthia in Undella Town, Unova, Gen 7, Rowlet, Cynthia in Alola Battle Tree. X and Y had Looker Bureau post game. Looker appears in Sinnoh, Unova, and Hoenn. Alola cameos equals Zygarde postpone. So basically, he's trying to say here that, you know, the fact that, like, you know, they kind of used, I guess the fact that Cynthia shows up in those games would maybe imply that those Pokemon were related in that sense. So he's trying to say that Ostada is going to be one from Sinnoh, one from Unova, and one from Hoenn for this reason because of Looker, which I don't know if that's really re necessarily reasonable. I don't really know. 
Um, but I would love to know what you guys think about this. So moving on to the next one. <clears throat> He says that three, four, and five all united into six. And this, again, coming from his uh, thoughts and opinions, um, you know, specifically in regards to somebody else's post, which is from Chris here, says his personal prediction is these guys, superior French nobility, Blaziken, of course, a rooster, now national animal, and then Empoleon. So this is definitely currently the biggest guess is these three. Um, but again, some people have different thoughts and opinions. Um, now, actually, a really cool post here by Fernie, and Fernie put this together, and it's really sick. Um, but basically, Fernie put together why superior makes sense. So first of all, superior will be a grass steel type based on high class and steel cut jewelry from the 1800s. Cinderace, is the other one will be fire ground steel type uh, fire sorry fire ground type soccer player uh, which is uh, played on grimy ground before the refurbishment of Lumios and Empoleon will be a water ice type because uh, the first French explorer found West Antarctic and uh, wait a daily uh, a daily land so basically he's basing it off of these things right uh, again. Uh, when was steel used in jewelry in France? The 1780s. Um, in this case, you guys can see here, cut jewelry, cut steel jewelry. Uh, then, of course, uh, when did France go to Antarctica? Between 1843 and 1872. So that would fit again with that. Um, I guess, you know, with Empoleon. At least that's where he's going with it. Is a Cinderace can be based on a commoner. Superior is based on a high class and Empoleon is based on Admiral Explorer. What I mean by that is Superior is going to have a high class, aka King Queen ruler. And what he's talking about here is that uh, a python killing a gnu. Uh, a large python wraps his winding body tightly around the straining gnu, forcing the much larger animal to the ground and biting him on the throat. So he's talking about this kind of like story here that exists. Um... Uh, which is about uh, from Antoine Louis Barrier, uh, which is from oh, 1796, actually, uh, or that he lived around that time. So this was this was made in 1840s. Um, but yeah, so he says it is well known that in the past that the higher class thought they were better than everyone else and looked down on the commoners. That's kind of the reason the French, you know, revolution kind of happened. They try to get rid of the the bourgeois, you know, the <laughs> the people on top, uh, all the rich, fancy people. Um, and they were better than everyone else and looked down on the commoners as worthless and superior was. Gold gold before, and it said that steel-cut jewelry was more valuable than gold, hence steel typing. Moving on, in the 18th century, the first football soccer club in France was founded by British uh, people who came to build uh, the Eiffel Tower and won the first French football championship. Cinderace being fire ground the, uh, is because of the grimy and dirty ground. Where do you play soccer on the ground? Well, also on grass, but still. Um, and this is about specifically... The first team which uh, came to be right here, you guys can see. British origins of France's oldest football club still playing today. Plumbers and woodworkers who came to build Eiffel Tower went on to win the first French football championship, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so long before uh, Paris Saint-Germain, there was actually a club still alive today, the Standard Athletic Club, or SAC, uh, founded in 1890, which, wow, that's pretty old. If you really think about it, man, it's uh, the first football club, you know, um, is, uh, you know, it's pretty old, man. You know, it's pretty old. It is pretty crazy to think about. But uh, yeah, moving on. It says, with that, uh, with that, it makes sense that Cinderace is the commoner because they made the first football club in France and they came to build the Eiffel Tower in France in 1889 in the 1800s. Now, Empoleon is based on Napoleon because in 1840s, Jules de Mont uh, de Urville uh, discovered West Antarctica and named it the Adélie Land or Adélie Coast, which, uh, were, which is where the Adélie penguins are from. Uh, Jules Dumont Urwell was an admiral, which is a naval officer, and he was an explorer who discovered a part of the Antarctica where Adelie penguins are from. Um, of course, and so Empoleon is going to be a water ice penguin, uh, which are from Antarctica, which is made up of ice. Now, I'm personally going to be honest. The more I think about it, the more I think we're not going to get new starters, that we're just going to get megas. Like, I personally think my opinion lands on that. That's where my thought process goes. That's where my feelings go with it. I could be wrong, but I think that's where it makes sense. Now, it feels great seeing Empoleon being made out of steel, but in the past, it was made of ice because at that time, people had rarely explored Antarctica, and first steel ships were built in 1800s, and the first steel ship was built in France, known uh, as the 1859, during the refurbishment era of Paris. Empoleon can be representing before the refurbishment of Lumio City, making it water ice type. Cinderace representing during the refurbishment, making fire ground type, uh, because they would have to be refurbishing Lumios from the ground up. Superior representing the refurbishment of Lumios as well. Again, making it superior grass steel, being high class. So he's kind of basing it on these concepts. Now, is there interesting? I would say. I think these are actually definitely interesting ways of looking at it. No guarantee that this is actually what they would be basing it on, but still, nonetheless, an interesting case. So moving on. 
We have something a little bit out there. This is posted by Jan, who said, uh, can we talk about the fact that Kalos is having the largest regional Pokedex of all regions, despite introducing the least amount of Pokemon? So it turns out the Kalos Pokedex actually contains, in total, 457 species of Pokemon. It's the largest number of species that a regional Pokedex has included without DLC, which is uh, pretty crazy to think about. Um, so, yeah, this Pokedex in Kalos might be crazy this time around as well. Now, number of Pokemon in the Pokedex, you had 151 from Kanto, 251 from uh, Johto. Uh, I guess uh, you had a total of, let's see, 153 with Lesko Picture Navy. And then you compare all these, right, when you combine them, and then you put it against Kalos, which had 457. So, yeah, it definitely had more. Damn, that's crazy, dude. So that's, uh, that's the most amount, um, which is actually nuts, really nuts, uh, that it had the largest Pokedex. But uh, nonetheless, it is an interesting fact. Moving on, here is a theory that I think is really sick. And this is from Karn EX, who is a Digimon YouTuber. But I freaking love what he came up with here. And he said, what would be interesting is if instead of using existing starter Pokemon, Legend ZA did something different again. Making Pokemon who aren't starters into the Lumio starters. Similar to Eevee going from normal Pokemon to starter in yellow version. And... This, honestly, I think would be the coolest ID, is dump all the regular starters and let's do something fun with, you know, Magby, Azuril, Badoo. Like, honestly, this would be so much cooler. I would personally prefer this. I would. I think this would be the best pack to take. But, of course, it is the most least likely one, to, to be honest with you guys. It's the least likely one to happen, but it is the coolest one if it were to actually take place. So, I don't know what you guys think about this. Shout out to Karn, by the way, I think this is a really cool ID. But... Moving on to the next post, though, it's from Curl Blitz again, who says that he has a bit of a, you know, a bit of a theory here. So, first of all, here we had 2024 prediction. Remember, guys, this image, 2024 prediction? Well, our friend here has a bit of a theory. He thinks that maybe Riddler Coup wasn't talking about a prediction for what the game was going to be for this year, but rather about starters. And I don't know if that's the actual case here, but what he says is Paldea, the Skull and Violet epilogue of Mochi Mayhem, and the three other regions reveal the ZA starters, question mark. Bulbasaur, like Rowlet, but it's also the only dual-type starter. Totodile and Tepic represent the regions of Cyndaquil and Oshawott. Doubting Bulbasaur due to the Mega Evo, plus uh, no need for a regional variant. So, again, a little bit of a theory, but I thought I would share it anyways. And then we got Kingly, which prediction he has is Litten, Snivy, and Totodile. And, of course... We have another prediction here from Helio, who's an amazing artist, who basically predicted Chikorita, Litten, and, of course, our good old friend Piplop. So, that's pretty much where that one goes. And finishing it off with this post right here in regards to the, the uh, you know, starters. Um, and they, this is Omino Tommy who says, Don't you think these starters look like the team leaders and consecutive Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6? So, Embor is PLZA and shows similarity to the leader of Team Flare in this age. Who does Embor resemble? The Old Mustard. Tower of Mastery connected to Kalos. And he's trying to make a connection between the different characters, like in this case, Galactic PLA Japan, and connecting that to, like, you know, uh, the Galactic leader from the real time, right? Like the actual real time leader, um, where I guess, in his opinion, Froki would fit the well the best uh, as being Japanese because it is a ninja. Um, then you had Fennekin, you know, with France, X and Y, so on and so forth. And then finally, over here, America, you had, you know, our big, big boy that, uh, that fits really good. Um, again, I don't really know if that's the case. I don't really, really know if, like, you know, this is a good enough way to connect it. But nonetheless, it is what it is. Also, by the way, uh, an interesting thing that somebody mentioned is that if we actually look at... Um, I forget what her name is. This is the gym leader from uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, she is the... I literally forgot her name now. Oh, man, I have... I have literally no idea what her name is. I've totally forgotten it. Um, but she's she's the one who who's the old one who's a fairy type leader. However, this picture up here is actually a picture of her when she was young. And some people said, huh, could she be related to the, of course, champion um, from none else than Pokemon X and Y? And hopefully, maybe we will see her actually in, you know, Pokemon Legends EA, because even her outfit does look a little bit more, more, you know, French. And the way she's dressed here is like a like a French madame, you know, like a French lady. They would just be, you know, um, you know, roaming the streets for a nice cafe to have a good coffee and, you know, like a, like a nice little, you know, dessert. You know what I mean? Uh, that's kind of the vibe that this is giving off, which I think is a pretty cool little thing. I'm going to talk about, again, all these ancestors and stuff. I'm going to be bringing all this up in future videos. So, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see what we get from that. 
Uh, but nonetheless, I want to finish it off, guys, with a final thing. Uh, we have a little bit of a rumor post. I thought it would be just fun to read it, because why not? Um, but I just thought we'd take a look at it again. The rumor posts are from 4chan, so do take it all with a mountain of salt. But I think it's, again, fun to mention. So this post is the following one. I'm going to read it for you guys. You can come, Maybe you can't read the actual information yourself, but it's fine. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy it. So here we go. It says, Pokemon Legends ZA May 2024. This was posted a few days ago, or actually today, actually. Uh, now, he says, I've just got information for Pokemon Legends EA regarding the next trailer explaining the game in depth. Now, there's no precise release date. This information will be revealed at May 2024. No date confirmed, though. The graphics are very pleasant and the game runs smoothly, unlike the last Nintendo Switch mainline entries. They might have been able to do this because of how segmented the uh, uh, segment, wait, how segmented things are in the in game areas. So, okay, so he's saying there's no precise release date. This information will be revealed at May 2024. No day confirmed, though, for 2024 May. I mean, dude, May or June is the earliest possible time. Earliest possible. Lowest chance, but earliest possible. I talked about this in my last video today, my previous video. That is the earliest possible time we could get an announcement. Now, he says the graphics are very pleasant and the game runs smoothly, unlike the last Nintendo Switch mainline entries. Uh, they might have been able to do this because of how segmented things and areas are in the game. Okay. He says, you yourself will be a private investigator working for the Looker Bureau. Now, you run by Emma and Mimi, the Meowstick. The protagonists are not Caleb and Serena, but they resemble them a little bit. The official names as of right now are unknown, and as you are completing your Pokedex, you'll be able to use it to, uh, to solve your assigned cases. The trailer shows how Pikachu's dex entry information is used in order to track its footprints. Uh, they thankfully have relaxed a little bit with the Pokedex task, and now it takes less, uh, less to perfect the Pokedex entry based on what it is seen. The starters are Snivy, Litten, and Piplup. No information uh, about if they will have regional forms or special Mega Evolutions. The game is set in Lumio City and its surroundings. Don't expect to go far away, though. Instead of visiting separate world areas like Pokemon Legends Arceus, you'll get to time travel between different uh, epochs of the city with special machine that does not wait, only wait, that does not only time travel yourself, but your entire uh, base of operation, the Looker Bureau. It is said that this machine is powered by a very unique Pokemon, but details are not given in regards to this. You will start at the present, 10 years after Pokemon X and Y, you'll be unlocking both past and future areas, with seven in total, counting the present as a uh, wait as an area as well. Battles are shown in action, featuring uh, the opposing trainer's Mega Charizard X, while the player has a Gardevoir that, does, uh, that also does Mega Evolve during the trailer, similar to Let's Go, uh, the Let's Go Mega Evolution. Gameplay images are not final, according to the trailer. So, it's a bit of a rumor. It doesn't really have much to say, but again, it does talk about time travel, which, again, I do think it would be interesting if this game does introduce time travel. Uh, right now, my most likely uh, prediction is that the game is set in the future. Um, at least that's, like, what I think. But... What I think also is possible is that the game takes place in two different time frames. Now, the intro to the trailer, and I wonder if I can just show you guys the actual website here, uh, Legends Pokemon. If you go to the website, literally just Legends Pokemon on YouTube, or sorry, on, on the internet. If you go into the website here, if you guys actually look at something, guys, and the trailer again, I'm going to rewatch this trailer a few, few more times uh, before, like, you know, the day happens. So here you guys see. So if you look at this trailer, what you will notice around the corners here is that it's in 4x3. Now, 4x3, if you don't understand what that means, 4x3 is an aspect ratio. You guys can see right here, 4x3 is an aspect ratio, right? Now, an aspect ratio is the size of a certain screen. Now, 4x3 is the old one. 4x3 is what screens looked like back in the day. Nowadays, most of you all will be using 16x9, right? 16x9 is more, more, you know, uh, more normal. So if you look at a 4x3 TV, this is what the TVs used to look like, a 4x3 TV. Now, if you look at a TV right here, right there, you guys can see this is a LCD screen on the right side, you know, a newer TV on the right side, but the movie that's being played or the show that's being played is in 4x3 format. So it's an old show being played on a new TV. So what I'm trying to say is that when we look at this format right here, it's in 4x3, implying that this is from the past. This is an old document of what they're planning. This is an old document with the old logo in the top right there of the Quasar Foundation, the group that are going to be working on this. So as we watch it, see, it's being drawn up on paper. But then here, we get to see it, everything turn into this almost like futuristic, like Tron Legacies, you know, like uh, kind of like futuristic vibe. And as we watch, you know, watch and follow along with Pikachu, you know, as he's running around. It's, again, a bit crazy, I'm not going to lie, but what I'm trying to say is, is that 
again, this looks futuristic, but then here, it goes back to that paper format. Like, look how the camera switches. Like, look, it literally fades away from a 16 by 9. Look how the whole screen is now filled up. This is 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But look at now how when it fades away, we go back, you know, as the camera shifts back to the actual paper, now the camera's back with the jagged edges and the 4 by 3 which again, gives a vibe of old. It looks like it's an old piece of footage. And again, same thing with the logo. The actual Pokemon Legends part here that says Pokemon Legends, that part looks very much more rustic. Like, look at the colors on it. It looks way more like the pink and everything and the, the gray. It looks more old, whereas the logo here of the Z and the A look more futuristic. So it gives this feeling that, is this gonna be a mix of the two? Like, if you look at Pokemon Legends Arceus, right? If you look at the logo of Legends Arceus, it gives off a much different vibe, right? Like, here you go. It's Legends Arceus' actual logo. And again, the vibe it gives off is kind of old. Like, the, the, the actual text of the Arceus, like the Arceus text, literally looks like old calligraphy. Like, you know, like calligraphy drawing, like uh, typing. Whereas this one doesn't. Look at the Z. The ZA looks futuristic. Also, guys... At no point have they ever said that Legends games have to be set in the past, okay? No point have they said that. Nowhere in the trailer, nowhere on the website, nowhere here does it say it has to be set in the past, okay? Like, all they say here is an urban redevelopment plan is underway to shape the city into a place that belongs to both people and Pokemon. Please look forward to seeing it for yourself. Seeing what for ourselves? The city when it's completed? Is that it? Again, the trailer doesn't tell us that. The trailer doesn't tell us, is this game set in the past or the future? It gives us a bit of hints to it, but there's no claim anywhere that Legends games have to be set in the past. They could also be set in the future for all we know. I just wanted to share that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of today's video, guys. Thank you all for watching. Again, let me know what you guys think about the actual starter theories, and also what you think about that rumor that I read right at the end. So, thank you all. I'll see you next one. Peace out, and bye-bye.